HP isn't exactly on my short list of favorite laptop manufacturers, but a great sale price, the AMD 7840U, and a 120Hz OLED screen threw this on my radar. How does it stack up? Let's find out. Slap Tech. This, then, is the HP Pavilion Plus 14, a lightweight laptop that's missing a mysterious something or other that prevents it from earning its Envy badge. It retails for about $850 and comes with everything you need and then some, like the AMD 7840U, an 8-core 16-thread CPU with 16 megs of cache that runs up to 5.1 gigahertz. Attached is the integrated Radeon 780M GPU, one of the most powerful integrated solutions on the market. It. Accompanying it all is 16 gigs of soldered RAM and a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. These bits sit underneath a glossy 14-inch 1800p OLED non-touch screen that refreshes up to 120 hertz. And running all this stuff is a 68 milliamp hour battery. The AC adapter is a minuscule 65 watt unit that charges through USB-C. It'll let you work 9 feet away from a wall, 12 feet if you upgrade the from the wall cord. When away from a wall socket, this laptop stayed on for 8 hours of internet work use with battery saver, 6 hours of streaming video, and 4 hours of Citra, also with battery saver. If all you want to do is play PC games expected to last an hour and 45 minutes, which is almost an eternity when it comes to PC gaming on battery power. This longevity is assured because HP refuses to throw a full 30 watts at the AMD 7840U, but even while starved for power, this CPU knows how to party, and we'll get into that later. I mean, sure, other laptops stay on for much longer, but they're not nearly this speedy when away from the plug. This HP Pavilion Plus is chiseled out of aluminum all around, giving it a pleasantly light footprint. Thanks to this metallic frame, fingerprints and oil are well hidden, all except on the keyboard keys that will shine a bit and wear away first if left dirty. The edges around the bottom portion are a little sharp, but since there's no lip it just drops off and the effect is less pronounced. With monochromatic silver styling cues, prepare to blend in everywhere and stand out nowhere. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right are two USB 3.2 and display ports, HDMI 2.1, and a USB A 3.2. On the left is the headset in and another USB A 3.2 for a total of two standard USBs. I'm very thankful for two USB A ports, and I think I found the first missing components that would otherwise qualify it for the Envy badge, like a card reader and USB 4. But who cares? I can do two external monitors natively. One of them is USB C and thus a pain in the ass, but regardless, it's still two external monitors. Four screws is what separates the inside of the laptop from the outside world. Underneath the bottom plate, it's plain to see that the NVMe drive is full-sized and RAM is not user-upgradable. A single thick heat pipe carries high temps away from the CPU to a fan that's connected to a dummy fan enclosure. We got that instead of a card reader, my friends. We also got that instead of a $1,000 price tag, so pick your poison. Typing things out on this keyboard is just fine. To be completely honest, I don't want to like the keyboard because the typing action is too firm and clicky for my liking, but I can't hate it because at the end of the day it works very well and rarely misses any strokes. Dedicated home and page scrolling keys line up the right side, and the right and left arrows are extra large compared to up and down, confusing everyone who tries to feel them out without looking. Dear laptop manufacturers, could you please stop? It's okay to shorten left and right and leave a freaking gap so that I can scan over it with my fingers. While most pavilion models have keys that color match the rest of the chassis, these keys are considerably darker and have a classy white backlight with two noticeably different levels of brightness. This backlight can be configured to be always on through the UEFI, and that's also where you'll find the function lock toggle, which unfortunately isn't mapped to the escape key. Moving the mouse with this touchpad is not too shabby. It's a large touchpad, feels a little cheap, and tends to get in the way while typing like a lazy bastard. I don't always mistakenly use the three-finger gesture to minimize all my apps, but when I do, it's when I'm using this laptop. While the main CPU is a main draw here, its widest market impact is definitely the 120Hz high-res OLED display. 
Ultra sharp 1800p res, excellent brightness, 16 by 10 aspect ratio with thin bezels, and the uncanny ability to see everything around, especially what's behind you because the thing is a black mirror with pixels. It's also as color accurate as can be with ultra smooth gradients. Since these be OLED pixels, ghosting is kept to a very low minimum. Taking it down a peg is the tilt angle, which falls well short of 180 degrees and is just enough for your lap. One more nitpicky detail is that it doesn't get very dim for a pitch dark room. Finally, I wouldn't put too much stock in the 120Hz rating. While it is better than 60, it's not the all singing, all dancing crap of the world when it comes to ghosting and smooth motion. Don't get me wrong, it's very good, but it's not on par with high quality 120Hz LED screens and it won't blow your socks off. Admittedly, that's a little sad for an OLED display. What's not sad are these speakers. The best part about them is that they get more than loud enough to fill a room. The worst part about them is they fire down and sound rather muffled. A huge amount of software trickery boosts bass into the treble range, so while you can clearly hear the bass from the package by a perfect circle, it's not real bass coming from the speakers. While this does allow for the full range of sound to come out, background noises in movies are much louder than they should be, and louder noises quiet lesser ones, so loud explosions will unnaturally quiet other sound effects or music while gaming. Here's a test of the webcam on the HP Pavilion Plus 14, 1440p. That's a very high resolution for a laptop webcam. And for comparison's sake, here's the Asus Zephyrus G14's webcam, 720p. Now this is in very excellent lighting with very low ambient noise. And now here's a test of the HP Pavilion Plus webcam in poor lighting. As you can see, I have very, very few lights on. There's just two lights on in my apartment right now. I also have my very loud oven fan on in the background to see just how well both of these laptops will filter out ambient noise. The magnificent low voltage CPU in this laptop makes for excellent system performance. Around 10,000 points in Cinebench R23 is quite fantastic for a mobile CPU and makes 4K video editing a breeze on the go as long as it's short form video editing thanks to the 16 gigs of capped memory. And yeah, the performance could be a little bit better with a more robust cooling solution, seeing as how this laptop only throws 15 to 20 watts at the 30 watt CPU, depending on what mood it's in. So while this HP is potentially leaving 30 to 50% of the CPU's performance on the table, you're only getting the same performance as a 10th gen Intel Core i9 at full power, you poor sad bastard. Hey, as long as I can use Citra at full speed on battery power, I'm good. And that's what this laptop does with room to spare. All the while temps are comfortably low the whole way around with the CPU sitting at 70 degrees and your lap is totally spared from any semblance of heat, even while gaming. On that note, on to gaming. Yes, it has the all-glorious 780M iGPU, AMD's most powerful integrated graphics solution so far. It trumps everything Iris Xe and even gives the newest Iris Arc or whatever a run for its money. Compared to Nvidia's offerings, it would be at the level of the GTX 1050 Ti, which means that the latest games will play, but at the lowest details possible. And before you tell me that the benchmarks place the 780M in the same metric as the 1650, that's when the CPU is fed the full 30 watts. That being said, playing RDR2 on battery power is pretty damn fun. As long as you let the game decide what graphics levels to use, it looks good and runs very smoothly. 
That doesn't mean it's adequate at everything, because if Snake Pass isn't going to run at 60 FPS at 1000p in the highest details, then Starfield, if anyone still plays that hot mess, is going to stutter a lot in shiny potato mode. At the end of the day, it fits the bill as an entry-level rig and has a fantastic screen to play PC games with. Like I mentioned before, temps stay nice and low thanks to the limited amount of watts given to the CPU. A side effect of the reduced wattage is that instead of being 10% ahead of its older 680M siblings, this 780M GPU lags behind by 3-5 FPS on average. As such, this laptop is a natural shoe-in for retro games. It has a brilliant OLED display with very little ghosting, a couple standard USB ports for easy controller use, speakers that fit the bill, and plenty of CPU power and battery life for using Dolphin away from home. We're talking 4 hours of Dolphin or Citra with full performance to boot, which is more than I can say for 90% of laptops in the same market space. For the bottom line, the HP Pavilion Plus 14 with the AMD 7840U is a fantastic laptop and doesn't necessitate compromise in any way, shape, or form. Even at its regular price of $850, it's worth it and won't let you down. Can it replace the Asus G14 as my mobile daily driver? It sure could, but it won't. I'll greatly miss the overall aesthetic of the pavilion, but it's not worth giving up a powerful dedicated GPU for noticeably better, but not substantially more, mobility and class. Notice I didn't mention battery life because G Helper on the Asus G14 is a godsend. In conclusion, students get two thumbs up. It's super light, has a sizable, efficient battery, and magnificent specs. It's hard to get too excited about it because of the asking price, but if it's not outside the budget, regret won't be an issue. Casual gamers should lower their standards and go for this. A GTX 1650 is a minimum for casual gamers, which leaves this at a disadvantage because of its handicapped gaming performance and lack of VRAM. Personally, I think the comfort and mobility make up for its slight performance shortcomings, but that's just me. Competitive gamers, I get it. You already have a huge desktop and just need something super light to carry around. You want to come to the light side of PCing, but are worried that AMD will come up with a much more powerful integrated GPU next year, and it might be bad timing. It's okay, I understand. Uncle Gavin wanted to come back to the US after avoiding his trial for being a Democrat ballot mule, but his timing sucked and he can't get past all the fresh razor wire at the Texas border. He asked me to meet him down there with a pair of pliers and a couple of Biden's Fed agents, but <laughs> he's gonna be waiting for a while. Home users can totally go for this. It was made for you. Lightweight, great battery life, always runs cool with plenty of speed, and is excellent for consuming streaming video with loud speakers and a superb screen. If you can get one for yourself, I'd highly recommend it. This has been a review of the HP Pavilion Plus 14 with the AMD 7840U here on SlapTech. Got a question? Ask below. Ask about anything, except how I know my Uncle Gavin was a ballot mule for Biden in 2020. That information is classified and could land me in jail for divulging, just like those who were merely escorted through the Capitol by Capitol Police on January 6th and are facing jail time. Who the hell is Ray Epps? And why did he only get six months parole for inciting violence? As always, feel free to like and subscribe, or dislike if you don't like the absence of blue and purple mood lighting. I know that shit really gets your gears going. Don't worry, I'll probably get some hot topic one of these days. Thanks for watching, and you guys, have a good night.